Douglas Herbert. So, Evening. two suspects. UK authorities admit they probably don't even know their real names. Right, aliases. Uh, are, are you surprised, Doug, that uh, they managed to to pinpoint these two people? No, I mean, look, they, they had, you know, hundreds of hours of CCTV footage. They literally were able to follow them from the, the moment they landed at uh, Heathrow Airport uh, till they were near, they didn't actually see them at the house, but near the house. Um, None of this actually really surprises me. You know, we're, we're back in this classic sort of eternally recurring uh, dynamic here. He said, she said. Here's the issue. In, in a load of cases, not just this one, we have had accusations made against Russia uh, for carrying out these types of attacks, not all, only poisonings. You mentioned the, uh, the most famous of the cases, Alexander Litvinenko, 2006. He was poisoned by polonium-210, a radioactive element at a bar in London. Uh, agonizing death. He did die from the poisoning eventually. British investigators uh, said that they thought the Kremlin was most likely, uh, most likely responsible for it. Absolute blanket denial ever since then from the Kremlin. You've had investigators always since then with two prime suspects in that Linfinenko case. They have been back in Russia. Presumably they haven't been out of the country since because it's that same mm. extradition uh, scenario here because Russia's constitution says they will not extradite their own citizens. So it's basically even if they had all the evidence in the world, they wouldn't be able to get these guys. So that's just, that's the most famous case. But, but, but I just want to mention here, there's a pattern beyond just that. We've seen a pattern with Crimea. It's called plausible deniability. Can you point to Putin? Can you actually catch him red-handed? Absolutely not. And what complicates it is, it probably isn't actually Putin a lot of the time. He has proxies. He has a lot of people who, even without coordinating yeah, we don't know with if he Kremlin, gave the direct order. Of course. And there are a lot of people in Russia who are more than ready to do the bidding for Putin, doing what they think he'd like to do. There are a lot of enemies of, uh, of these former spies, like Litvinenko. You don't need Putin necessarily to give any direct order. That's why plausible deniability has worked, perhaps until now. It gets much more difficult when you have a CCTV camera following the trail of of suspects from the airport almost to the door, the footsteps of the house, the door of the, the house. Yeah, and we can also remind people of the timing. It was back in March, the buildup to Vladimir Putin's re-election and the accusations against Russia, well, they galvanized public opinion behind Putin. Yeah, Putin has used a lot of these, they're what they're called often adventures abroad or anything which sort of stokes uh, whips up nationalist pride in Russia has always worked at Vladimir Putin's advantage, although we have seen uh, sort because of- Because it's us versus them. But we've seen the counterpoint more recently to that narrative. We've seen recently those pensioner protests in Russia. There are domestic issues, economic issues, which could really blow back on Putin. So there's a limit to how much these so-called domestic adventures can help him. And when I was talking before about a pattern, Francois, Crimea, you'll remember, right? Initially, who who occupied all those buildings in Crimea? It was the little green men. They were sort of these local militia units. A year later, Putin uh, acknowledged, yeah, some of them, there were also Russian soldiers involved. So he sort of retracted the initial denial. The Malaysian airliner, we had a Dutch investigation, international investigations concluding that the Malaysia Flight 17 over eastern Ukraine 2014, uh, with the death of 298 passengers, that it was the Russian, a Russian military weapon that downed that. Now, was it pro-Russian separatists who fired the missiles? Perhaps, but the investigation uh, tied it right to the Russian military. Blanket denial from Russia. We're seeing it once again. What are they doing? What's their reaction with this this current case? They're blaming basically Britain. They're denying it, first of all, any in, in involvement. And they are basically calling this information manipulation, fabricated accusations. And they're doing what they did with, with Syria and the chemical accusations. They, when, when Russia was accused of complicity in some of those chemical attacks in Syria, they basically say, why don't you let us uh, uh, see, be part of the investigation? So they're using a lot of the same tactics, a lot of the same blanket deniability, and it comes down to he said, she said, and we're stuck because there is no extradition. These guys aren't going to be sent to Britain to be tried. There isn't going to be an open trial. Theresa May acknowledged that on mm. the floor of Parliament today. So there's no closure here, and it just serves in the short term to ratchet up tensions even more between Russia and the West. Douglas Herbert, many thanks.